Hello and welcome to another one of my Zapier training videos. In this video, I'm going to explain how and when you can use paths in Zapier to really take your use of Zapier to that next level uh, by programming in different scenarios into your into your Zaps. Uh, really great feature that we're going to be talking about today. Now, if you like my videos about Zapier, if you want to see more videos like this, please give this video a like, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can get new videos about Zapier, Asana, Pipedrive, and other productivity tips direct to your feed. So let's talk about paths. What are they? First of all, why do you need them? I think the main reason paths are useful is because often people create duplicate zaps where they've changed one condition in a filter for different types of situation or scenario that might occur. So for example, you have a trigger here, which is a new jot form submission. So we have an online form that gets filled out. That's our trigger. And zaps are usually very linear. You know, they have maybe a filter and then a bunch of action steps that take place. And so often people duplicate a zap and they change that filter slightly because they need the zap to do different things in different situations. With paths, you don't actually need to do that. Paths allow you to program in different paths or routes that the zap can take based on different conditions that we've programmed in. And so we have three paths in this particular example. And it's not that Zapier can only go down one of them. It can actually go down multiple or all of the paths simultaneously and do all of the actions based on the conditions that you've programmed in. So let's break down this zap and see how paths kind of come into play here. So like I said, we start with our trigger, which is when, in this case, it's when a jot form is filled out. That's our trigger. You could have a filter in here. I actually don't have one in this example, but often we use filters. And then I've got like an, a search step here. So this isn't really an action. Nothing's really happening here. But for this particular zap, we are searching for a project in Asana. Once that project has been found, we come to a three-way path, three different routes we can go down. And if I click on one of the paths, let's click on social first of all. Uh, this is the name of the path. It doesn't really, it's just what is the path called? It's, it's not really particularly important. But then we come to the rules here. And rules here work very similar to filters in Zapier. If you've used filters before to say, you know, stop the zap if, if this particular condition is or is not met, you know, don't do anything. The rules here are very similar to how filters work. So for this particular path, Zapier will only go down this path if all products ordered, this is the field, this is one of the questions from JotForm. If that field contains the word social. So if that field contains the word social, Zapier will go down this path and it will run all of the action steps in this path. So we just have one step in this one, which is it's creating a task in Asana for this particular social path. This, uh, I can switch paths up here. I can go to the creative one. This is doing something very similar. Again, simple rule. If the products ordered contains the word creative, do this. And with the third one, you can see it's slightly different. We've got if the uh, products ordered contains targeted marketing, create a task. And with this particular path, we're also sending an email as well. So it's got an extra step that the other paths don't have. And like I said, that jot form, if all three of those boxes are ticked, the zap can actually go down all three paths at once and do all every single set of actions. And so previously, without paths, if you are on one of the lower tier plans, um, you will need to set up multiple zaps to make this particular, to do these different things. If you have paths, you can be much more efficient. You don't need to duplicate the zaps. You can just set up different paths for different conditions and scenarios that are taking place. Now, paths is only available on the Zapier professional plan or higher. So you will need to be on the, uh, yeah, the professional plan at least in order to use this feature. But it is a really powerful way of using Zapier, like I said, and just going to help you to get to that next level with the automations that you're building. If you have any questions about Zapier or using paths, leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.